Trình huynh khinh anh sao In huynh xuyên Cả ê y la rinh A sa ca ha la rinh Sa ca la rinh Sao anh khinh rinh xuyên Aum Namaste So we're going to talk about consciousness again. And remember, the last time we talked about consciousness, we talked about it in terms of the light, the quality and kind of light that we see in the different states of consciousness. So just to review very quickly, let's go over that again. There are four states of consciousness. Jagrat, where we see the world, Svapna, in dreams, Sushupti, deep sleep or the void, and Turiya, or the self. In Jagrat consciousness, the light is reflective and it reflects off of external objects. In Svapna, the light is internal and the objects are self-luminous. In Sushupti, the light is covered. It looks like the void. There's no light, no objects, no nothing. And in Turiya, there is only light, the light of the self, or Brahman. Now, let's take another look at these same four states of consciousness that everyone experiences all the time. Huh? I want to emphasize that the four states of consciousness go on concurrently, but our focus changes. So just like, for example, when we're asleep, we're in Svapna or even Sushupti, still a loud noise can wake us up, which means there's still some awareness of Jagrat. And of course, behind all of them, there's always Turiya. Let's take a look. Turiya is the self. That's the positive state of consciousness, where self is the only object, meaning there's non-duality. So this is the truth. This is self-realization. This is enlightenment. And Turiya is always there. We're always in Turiya. <laughs> but most of us don't realize it because we're focused on the other states of consciousness. So what are they again? Sushupti, the void. In this state, the object is darkness, emptiness, or nothingness. And this is actually a state of ignorance. It covers over the pure consciousness in Turiya and also embodies the three types of ignorance, positive desire, negative desire, and delusion. And the delusion is, of course, that we are a separate individual being and that we can desire things both positively and negatively. Negative desire means I don't want that. Positive desire means I want that. So because of this ignorance, the pure light of Turiya becomes covered. And then, once that's covered, dreams can arise in Svapna. In this, the object is internal, self-luminous thoughts, dreams in other words. So in this state of consciousness, we perceive dreams and thoughts also. So thoughts are actually dreams, but when we're focused on Svapna, they appear real, they appear solid. Finally, there's the state of Jagra, where we perceive the world through the senses. And in this state, the objects are in our external, individual objects and ego, the illusion of I. Huh? The ego is not present in the other states. We simply 
experience in dreams, for example, bits of karma that are too small, really, to be experienced in jagra. But they seem real, even though we have no ego in that state. But we sure do in jagra. <laughs> in fact, the ego is the dominant perception in that state. Uh, how many sentences do we begin with I? I want this, I don't want that, I do this, this is mine. Huh? <laughs> it's all illusion because it's temporary. Anyway, let's take a different look at these four states of consciousness. Let's take a look at how it appears to our experience. Up till now, we've been looking at them analytically. So let's look at them experientially, how they actually appear to us. First of all, Turiya is the basis of everything. Turiya is the reality, and we perceive it all the time. And Turiya is nothing but light, pure, unadulterated, unconditioned awareness, without beginning, end, or any other boundaries. But then we cover that up with Sushupti, and Sushupti narrows the Turiya and makes it appear that we are an individual. It narrows our scope, in other words. It creates an illusion based on ignorance. So on top of that narrowed scope, then we have the Svapna. And Svapna is dreams or thoughts. So we think about objects, but those objects, of course, aren't real. They're part of the illusion. So they uh, layer on top of the Turiya and Sushupti consciousness, creating a filter where we see certain objects that we have in our mind as an ontology like trees and houses and mountains and birds. Uh, we see those, but we don't see the objects that are not in our ontology. Like, for example, Turiya. <laughs> Until we become educated in spiritual life, and then we can observe these things too. But in the normal state of consciousness, all we see are the objects that are already in the back of our minds. And finally, in Jagra, these thoughts are superimposed with objects that we perceive through the senses that match them. And of course, everything is overlaid by the conception of I, uh, my identity, my religion, my philosophy, my politics, my this, my that, I, 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 I. <laughs> So this is the experience. But when we enter meditation, at first we strip off the Jagra consciousness and our focus is on Svapna. And then that eventually goes away when the mind becomes quiet and we can perceive the void, Sushupti. Then finally, when we reach enlightenment, we perceive only Turiya, and this is the goal. So Ma is reciprocating nicely. <laughs> the dogs hate that temple bell. They run away when they hear it. I think they're evil. They don't like to hear the bells from the temple. Demon dogs, huh? hounds of hell. <laughs> I really don't like dogs. And the reason is their barking always interrupts my meditation. Why can't they be nice and quiet like cats? <laughs> anyway, so there are these four states of consciousness. And although we can consider them separately in analytical arrangement, in practical life and experience, they're superimposed on one another. So although the eternal 
state of consciousness is Puriya. The others get superimposed on it, and that's how our view changes from Brahman to the individual ego, the body, the possessions, the relations, uh, the designations. Of course, these are actually Swapna, dreams. So we have a name, huh? Mr. So-and-so or Swami such-and-such. <laughs> and position, like the head of the uh, department of such-and-such -such at X Corp, you know? <laughs> These are designations. They're dreams, they're thoughts. So there's Swapna consciousness. But that Swapna consciousness is overlaid Huh? like a filter, and it causes us to see everything in terms of that filter. So when something happens on the job, we don't think of it in, let's say, objective terms. We think of it in terms of how, how it affects our assumed identity, our label, our position. And this is an abstract thing. It has no physical reality. But because everyone agrees that it's so, it seems to be real. So you can say, I'm, the, I'm an engineer. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of engineer. But you can say, I'm an engineer. I'm an executive. I love that one. Huh? Executive. And, uh, or you could say, I'm the CEO or the chairman of the board. What does that mean? It's simply an abstract agreement, words that everyone takes to be true and then dreams a reality based on them. And finally, of course, everyone is bewildered by sushupti. Everyone is bewildered by ignorance, thinking that I am an individual. I want this. I don't want that. Huh? I am the experiencer, I am the doer, the thinker, the knower, the desirer, and so on. This is all ignorance. Why? Because it's illusion. It's illusory because it's temporary. It's non-satisfactory and it's not self. Non-eternal, non-satisfactory, and not self. But Turiya, Turiya is the positive that all these other negative things are based on. Turiya is the light that always shines through these different filters. And this is how we know we exist, because the Turiya is always there. It's permanent, not impermanent. And it's satisfactory because it's full of bliss. And it is the self. Self with a capital S, Brahma, the reality, the root substance from which everything else is made, pure consciousness. And realization of this is self-realization with a capital S. So this is enlightenment. It means removing in meditation these filters that cloud the Turiya and obscure its real nature. And once we have satisfied ourselves that, that this is the actual reality, then when the other ones come back, you know, at the end of meditation or whatever, we're not deluded by them anymore. That's why the self-realized person is aware of the environment and still has a mind and a personality and so on, but he doesn't think that it's his self. He's not deluded. And he manages them accordingly as servants instead of masters. And this view, this uh, ontological position is the key to complete enlightenment. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.